who's going to be able to get the COVID-19 vaccine first? A group of CDC advisors voted today on who will have first priority vaccine when the distribution begins. This afternoon, the advisory panel voted 13 to 1 that in the first phase of distribution, frontline health care workers and nursing home residents will be the first to receive the vaccine. Now, this only applies to health care workers who are currently in hospitals treating COVID-19 patients. Now, it's important to note this was just an advisory vote. According to the CDC, the final vote will come a day or two after a vaccine has been authorized. And Dr. Nancy Cass from Johns Hopkins University joins us now to discuss what goes into making the decision of who gets the vaccine first. Dr. Cass, thank you so much for talking with us tonight. Thanks. Happy to be with you. Okay, so you're a professor of bioethics and public health, so this is definitely in your wheelhouse. What went into the decision to choose healthcare workers and seniors in nursing homes as the primary candidates for the first round of this vaccine? Yeah, that's a great question. So there are really two main ethics considerations that are at play. One is benefit and one is fairness. So part of the question is who's at greatest risk of COVID. And we think of risk of COVID in two ways. The first is, who are the people at greatest risk of contracting the infection? And that's going to be healthcare workers and essential workers, people who are out in the community and can't just stay home and telework. But the second part of risk is who, if they get infected, is at greatest risk of a really bad outcome, really severe um, disease or death. And then within that, we need to make sure that how it's rolled out is fair. Fair means that we're really clear on what the criteria are, that it, we're really transparent about the criteria, and that people who are later in line understand why people who are earlier in line get to be in a different place. You know, you brought up two great points because in layman's terms, the way I hear it is, so we're getting the biggest bang for our buck by going to the smaller populations, not the vast populations of, you know, the general public, but the smaller populations that are at the highest risk, not of just getting the disease, but then dying from the disease. Is that an accurate assessment? It's an accurate assessment, and they both come into play. You know, in the in the lead-in, it was mentioned residents of nursing homes, but I think what's also important to recognize is my understanding of the um, advice that came out today is also that the employees in the nursing homes ought to be in this top tier. And that's really important because those are essential workers. First of all, they're the ones who, through really no fault of their own, are most likely to put the nursing home residents at risk of COVID. Most of the nursing home residents aren't really going anywhere. Secondly, by virtue of being essential workers, they are stepping forward and performing this essential duty. We owe them something. And quite honestly, in terms of equity, which is another piece of fairness, we need to make sure that people at all rungs of our society are sort of have equal chances of getting this life-saving vaccine. And unfortunately, people who work in long-term care facilities are often not the highest paid. This is also really true in healthcare settings. When people say healthcare workers are first in line for a vaccine, they often think doctors or nurses. But honestly, in most of the guidance, frontline COVID healthcare workers includes the doctors, the nurses, the respiratory technicians, the custodial staff who clean the rooms. All those people are likely at equal risk and all of them are going to be in the first tier. You know, hearing it from you, you are an expert. It just really helps to broaden our scope of understanding with this. So I really appreciate your time because there's been a lot of discussion about uh, having educators, teachers, uh, and that community vaccinated possibly next. Would you support that? Well, I would. I will say that I am personally one of the people who's very concerned about the long-term impact on our K through 12 kids for not being in school and particularly for certain subpopulations of these kids. What I think is important to remember, and I'm so pleased about the advice that came out today, is that they're not putting all healthcare workers in one group as top priority. There are 23 million healthcare workers in the United States, and some of them actually are in fields that are at pretty low risk. And so putting the highest risk healthcare workers in the top tier 
in my view, makes sense. But to think about which essential workers, essential for our society and our long-term well-being, ought to be next is really important. And I agree with you. In my my own view, teachers ought to be in the next tier. They're not the only groups, um, but without that, kids in lots of parts of the country are unlikely to be able to go back to school. Well, let me find out then, who do you think are some of the other groups that should be in that second tier? Yeah, so there are a lot of workers who seem to be at very high risk of of getting the infection by virtue of the close proximity of their work. Um, Meat packers, poultry workers have been um, uh, identified as a high risk group. The grocery store workers, the people, the cashiers in pharmacies, there are a lot of people who are doing the daily work that people who telecommute really rely on. And um, that is very important. At the same time, even within those groups, there are going to be people who are at highest risk of getting seriously ill if they become infected. So all those people who are out and about by virtue of their job are at risk of getting infected. Even within that, we can have a second layer of criteria of the people within those essential worker group who also are older, are immunocompromised, or who have a couple of pre-existing illnesses. And that means those two risks are coming together and they're really the people who deserve to be early in line. Wow, Dr. Cass, you have provided a wealth of information tonight. I know we're gonna be checking back in with you. I really appreciate your time. You stay healthy and uh, we look forward to talking to you again. Thanks so much, same to you. you.